Mailer believed that you had to uh, get into some kind of rhythm for writing. All writers know this. If you're going to be a writer, you have to have a routine. Your routine is your own. His routine was to work two shifts a day. Uh, he would start around 10 o'clock in the morning after he played solitaire to, as he said, he played solitaire to comb his mind, to open it up and get all the wrinkles out of it. And then he would go to work with his mind uh, kind of empty of ideas. Uh, and he would work for four, three or four hours, he would have lunch, uh, uh, do the mail, and then he would go back to work again. He would look, work another shift. At the end of his life, he would work to 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. He worked long days, and in the last 20 years of his life, he tried to work almost every single day. His advice that he gave to all writers whenever he did master classes and interviews was, uh, if you say that you're going to write tomorrow morning, make sure that you do, because while you're asleep, your unconscious is going to be preparing material for you. And so when the troops are all lined up in the morning, don't leave them out standing in the rain. Mela believed that experience that was not sought, but experience that was thrust upon you, like when you, let's say, you get into skid on an icy road in the winter, uh, or, you know, you get a, an illness that you weren't expecting to get or being drafted into the army. No one really understands what it's like to be drafted into the service until it happens to them, and they find it's a, a very wrenching experience. The U.S. Army was the only job, uh, with one exception, that Norman Mailer had for his entire life. He was in the army for 26 months, and for the rest of his life, he was an independent writer. He had about six months when he was a director, a movie director. But that was, that was small. The Army uh, was, he said, the best experience of his life and the worst. He was a terrible soldier. He uh, was a brave soldier. He was, a, you know, got into uh, a reconnaissance unit and got into some skirmishes and so forth. Nothing very heavy in the Philippines. Uh, but he had bad eyesight. Um, he was not physically very strong. Uh, but he did his patrols and uh, had quite a career. And when he came out of the Army, he had voluminous notes and about 500, 400, 500 letters to his first wife, which he used as the basis for his first novel, The Naked and the Dead. All of Mailer's works really take place uh, in the last 50 years of the 20th century. And the Cold War was the overhang, uh, the, the, the cloud over everything in all of its manifestations, Cuba, technology, the arms race, American democracy, was always America trying to break free, trying to deal with the Cold War. Uh, Mela's best friends as writers were, were that crew that came out of World War II. Uh, William Styron, uh, James Jones, who wrote from, from Here to Eternity, who was probably his most uh, profound male friendship of his life. Uh, but he was also friendly with uh, people like Phil Roth, uh, Kurt Vonnegut was a very good friend of his. Joseph Heller was friendly with him. Uh, so that whole World War II generation who had fought in the war and written those books in the 1950s, all through the 1950s to the 1960s, those were his, his closest friends. He had later on uh, fights with all of them. He split with, uh, with Styron. He split with Jones. Uh, he had spats with uh, Philip Roth. He broke away from all of them, and the community that was there among those writers in the early 50s dissolved with in acrimony in the late 50s. And uh, from that time on, Mailer was extremely competitive with all, of the, with all the other writers. He wrote a series of essays about his contemporaries. He did it twice, and they were uh, very insightful, but also very, very, very uh, filled with, with kind of personal invective. Uh, it was like sitting next to him in a bar listening to, him to talk about these people. He brought, in, he brought everything into literary criticism. It wasn't formal. He, he would tell you stories about them uh, because he knew them all. Uh, but this criticism is still probably some of the most incisive criticism of all of those writers. He was one of the pioneers of the new journalism. He was the one that broke down the barriers between fiction and nonfiction. Mailer was, was probably the pioneer in those early essays he was writing in 1962 for Esquire magazine. The conflation of genres where fiction and nonfiction are all mixed up and you use fictional techniques, you, you make sure your facts are straight, you make sure you're accurate, you don't make things up, but you use every fictional technique that's in the book to write your nonfiction. He struggled with point of view and how to do it. He got tired of writing about himself at a certain point and he wrote his second masterpiece, The Executioner's Song, in which he is absent 
completely, like an empty chair at dinner.